Horus Lupercal is the most important Primarch in all of 40k lore. He was responsible for leading the civil war that put an end to humanity's expansion in the Milky Way galaxy, entombed the Emperor of Mankind on the Golden Throne, and set the Imperium of Man down the path of regression and repression. The Horus Heresy ended with the death of Horus at the hands of the Emperor of Mankind and although he eradicated the spirit of Horus so that the ruinous powers of chaos could never turn him into a demon primarch, his body was not destroyed. The story of the remains of Horus continue long after the Horus heresy, and plays a big part in giving rise to another one of the Imperium's most dangerous enemies. And with all that said, I want to welcome you guys back to another 40 Facts about the 40k universe. I am your host Gersh1, and today we're going to be talking about what happened to Horus's body. If you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. If you guys have suggestions for any topics, please let me know what they are in the comment section below or any questions, just comment down in the comment section below. And if you guys enjoy our content, hit the like button, tell your friends, and we do have a Patreon link in the description if you guys want to support us. It's just a dollar a month. Uh, but yeah, liking, commenting really does help out the channel. So with all that said, let's get into 40 facts on what happened to Horus's body. Following the death of Warmaster Horus aboard his flagship, the Vengeful Spirit, First Captain Abaddon and the surviving Sons of Horus broke orbit from Terra and fought their way free of the traitors losing battle. They held on to the Warmaster's body and managed to escape into the Void. A time of reprisal and retribution known as the Great Scouring followed, and countless worlds were put to death by the Loyalists for siding with Horus. Those traitor legions that remained in the Imperium were hunted down across the stars and slaughtered for the act of treason. Abaddon and the remaining Sons of Horus took refuge in the Eye of Terror, choosing to plunge into the Maelstrom of Madness rather than face extinction at the hands of the Emperor's Vengeful Warriors. The first captain abandoned his legion, taking only the Primarch's flagship the Vengeful Spirit. As for the surviving Sons of Horus, they carried the body of their Primarch, now preserved in stasis, further into the Eye of Terror ignoring the wars between the traitorous legions that raged all around them. On the demon world of Malium, a graveyard world of steel and rust, the Sons of Horus raised a fortress, fashioning a mighty citadel from the wreckages of decaying vessels lost to the warp and with the aid of thousands of slaves they had taken from the worlds of the Imperium. The legion interned Horus's body within the Great Tomb, where many fell into worshipping this fallen demigod. This great tomb became Lupercalios, the monument. It was a mausoleum of the 16th legion as much as it was a stronghold. It was where the body of their Primarch was finally laid to rest, and few of the other legions were permitted anywhere near the sun's last bastion. It also served as a fortress from which they would launch further attacks upon both the Imperium and their fellow traitor legions. The wars between the other legions who had sided with Horus during the Horus Heresy raged all across the Eye of Terror. These conflicts became known as the Slave Wars and yet the Sons of Horus remain largely apart from these conflicts. However, jealous eyes now turned their way, as the mighty fortress held something of great value, the body of Horus. Traitorous forces gathered against them and conspired to rob them of the remains of Horus to further their own vile and selfish ambitions. The Primarch's body with its potent genetic information and biological secrets was a great prize indeed. In a sudden assault, the remnants of the debased Emperor's children, having grown vastly in power after firmly cementing their terrible packs with Slanesh, easily smashed their way through the defenses of Malium and into the center chamber of the Sons of Horus' stronghold. They stole the body of the slain Primarch from the heart of its tomb and spirited it away. They would hand over this great prize to the dark apothecary Fabius Bile who intended to clone it in order to create a new and still greater War Master of Chaos in order to restore the traitorous legion's unity and put an end to the slave wars. There was no doubt that Fabius Bile would successfully clone the Primarch, and the Sons of Horus were intent on stopping this blasphemy. Gathering allies from other legions, who understood the danger of a cloned Horus, they searched for the vengeful spirit and the former first captain. Upon his discovery, the traitors were surprised to hear that Abaddon was ready to take on the task of uniting the traitors, putting an end to the slave wars, and stopping Fabius Bile from creating a twisted abomination of their clone father. Under Abaddon, the Black Legion discovered the whereabouts of the clone lord and assaulted his lunar cruiser, the renamed Flesh Market. It was aboard this ship that the Black Legion discovered how wrong they truly were in believing that the Emperor's children were years away from cloning the Primarch. During the assault of the Flesh Market, a massive figure emerged from the Annex Chamber, swinging the immense Maul Worldbreaker, 
a gift made to Horus by the Emperor himself upon the Primarch's ascension to the rank of Warmaster, into the first rank of Rubricae, sending three of them crashing against the shell-pocketed walls. The figure then turned towards the traitorous legionnaire's loose rank and charged. It was not a child clone from the scraps of tissue and drops of blood, nor an abomination half lost to mutation's touch. It was Horus Lubricaw, cloned from the dead flesh harvested directly from his stasis preserved corpse. He was clad in the breathtaking black war plate stripped from his dead body, and over his shoulder was the white wolf fur cloak and the pale shimmer of a kinetic force field protecting him like a halo. Horus began to slaughter the traitors with his world breaker. Heavy bolters quickly opened up, firing their explosive rounds at the former war master of the Imperium with every bolt hitting home. But even as their bolts tore at Horus's armor and flesh, their initiative did little but to doom them before the rest of their fellow warriors. The gathered warriors broke before the clone war master's onslaught and finally fell back, scattering to the edge of the room in order to escape the immense war maw of the enraged revenant. Abaddon stood behind Horus, and with a single word he halted the Primarch's rampage. Enough. He had barely even raised his voice, as the absolute authority in his tone was all that was required. Horus turned in a blur, swinging the massive war maw at its newest threat. Abaddon not only parried the mace, he caught it with the talon of Horus. He held it, he gripped it in the great talon, stained with the blood of a god and an angel. Father and son faced each other, breathing spite into each other's snarling features. For the first time, the Primarch spoke. That is my talon. Abaddon closed the massive fist, and Worldbreaker broke, shattering against the superior weapon. Scraps of metal fell from Abaddon's fingers. Despite the legends and stories told about this moment, there was no humble request made to his gathered sons, no glorious speech about the possibilities of a new era, or how he begged for mercy when faced with the Justerian blades. There was also no impassioned judgment delivered by Abaddon, as destiny changed hands from one war master to the next. There was only a clone father and a prodigal son, surrounded by the dead and the wounded. Recognition finally flared into the Revenant's eyes. Ezekiel, my son, my son. All five of Abaddon's claws rammed so deep into Horus's chest that they burst from his back. Dark redness spread across what was left of the white fur cloak draped in tatters across Horus's shoulder. A genetic god's blood rained down to the filthy laboratory floor. The storm bolter on the talon's back kicked three times, burying six bolts inside Horus's exposed chest and neck. There they blasted him apart from within, sending blood splattering across those left prone, watching in mute witness. Horus's knees buckled, but Abaddon would not let him fall. Horus's mouth worked, but no sound came forth. If he did have any last words, Abaddon was the only one to hear it. With a slow, smooth withdrawal, Abaddon pulled the talons clear of his father's body, and the moment before the light finally went out in the reborn Primarch's eyes, Abaddon whispered five words. I am not your son. Abaddon had done what no traitor thought was possible. He killed a Primarch. With this victory, the Emperor's children were shattered and Abaddon destroyed the remains of both the clone and his true father, so that no one would ever attempt to clone Horus again. And those were 40 facts on what happened to Horus's body, or the cloned Horus. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now, I want to clarify that the remains of Horus are not completely destroyed, um, or... Fabius Bile still has some, is what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't know if he has enough to clone, or to create a clone of Horus as strong as the one that Abaddon destroyed, but he does have the, the, the ability to basically clone all 20 Primarchs. If not, he already has those clones created, and they're just floating in a vat somewhere. Um, but whether GW is going to do anything with those clones, you know, who knows in the future. I think it would be kind of cool to have a Horus um, model in 40k, uh, comment down below. Let me know what you think about that. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, that, that, that's pretty much it. That's what happened to Horace's body. If you guys have suggestions for any other topics, please let me know what they are in the comment section below. Now, if you guys really enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Tell YouTube that you like this type of content and uh, share this with your friends. Um, and yeah, thanks for listening. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. This was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>